All right, hello. Uh, my name is Amika Hunter. I'm here with my theater company, A Little Bit Off. Um, it's just two of us. We're a comedy duo out of Portland, Oregon, and we're back at the Winnipeg Fringe. Um, very excited to be back after four years away from the Fringe. So um, we're here with our show called A Grave Mistake. It's a comedy show. Um, it's a comedy show that's a choose your own adventure. So uh, we thought it would be really fun for us and also for our audiences if uh, we built an entire show with basically twice as much material as a regular show. Um, but the audience gets to choose what happens next. And so it's a really fun setup, but I will say perhaps our techs might not find it quite as fun because it gets really complicated to figure out how to do the lights and sound cues um, when we don't know which scene is going to come next. And we also have a lot of costume changes. So it's a big adventure for us. It's a brand new show, um, and we just opened last night. Yeah. And how did they come up with this idea? Because it sounds yeah. like a very unique idea. Yeah, so um, historically speaking, we've done, uh, our background is in clown, actually, and so we do a lot of physical comedy shows. Um, we've been here at the Fringe in the past doing sort of more traditional physical comedy shows. This time we wanted to do something a little bit spooky, um, but it's still absolutely a comedy, so it's, it's we would say, a horror-themed comedy, um, and we wanted to play with some sort of darker imagery, but still with a light and playful tone. Um, and the choose your own adventure thing sort of came out of the idea of, you know, telling ghost stories around a campfire and have, you know, those old shows where somebody is narrating about what story is about to happen, almost like the Twilight Zone, you know. Um, the choose your own adventure, we just kind of thought that that would be a fun way to mix it up uh, because we do like to uh, be playful on stage. Our shows are usually somewhere between a heavily stri uh, scripted show and a, you know, completely on the, off the cuff show. And so we kind of married those two ideas to, to keep it, you know, keep it fresh for us. But as of right now, it's pretty, it's pretty fresh. Um, and we're really trying to figure out, okay, what scene comes next? And there's times when I'm backstage waiting to hear what the audience chooses because that'll determine which thing I put on to go back out there. So definitely keeping us on our toes. So is this the first time you've done this kind of concept, or have you done other fringes before? Oh, we've done a lot of fringes. We've been uh, working together for about 10 years, almost 10 years now. Um, and so we, I'm trying to think, I think our first Fringe Festival was in 2014. Um, and we've basically been touring together, making shows together since then. We've been to Australia, New Zealand. Um, we've done these Canadian Fringes a lot of the time and some in the States as well. Um, we actually took one year off in 2019 and we thought that would be our break year and we'd come back in 2020. But for obvious reasons, that didn't happen. So we took a bit of a longer break than we anticipated, but we're really excited to be back, back on tour this summer, yeah. And you explored other genres besides the horror comedy? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So this is the first time we're delving into horror at all, but we're, we're comedians through and through. Um, I actually trained... Uh, I trained as a clown. I dropped out of college and went to clown school um, where I learned a lot of physical comedy techniques. And so we don't call it a clown show what we do exactly, um, but it's definitely very physical comedy, um, you know, very stylistic, prop-heavy, character-heavy comedy. Um, and we have a lot of fun with that. In the past, we've been here... I can't remember exactly what shows we've done at which festival because we've toured a lot, but um, in the past, we've done a show where we are aviators, like old-timey aviators doing acrobatics and blowing up balloons. We have this big balloon that we climb inside of. Uh, that show is Bow and Arrow. And then we did one where we were nuns on hoverboards. Uh, we did one as a maid and butler duo with, like, a sponge that came to life. So um, this is definitely sort of in line with what we're used to doing, but the choose your own adventure part is, is what's really new for us. Yeah. And what's your background in theater? Did you go to university or college and take courses in theater? Um, so I started doing theater in high school. I was um, on the improv troupe. I was, a, you know, a, a, a thespian. We did musicals. We did regular plays. Um, and then I went to college, and uh, while there, I started doing a little bit of circus stuff. I got into doing acrobatics, um, you know, stilting, a little bit of uh, aerial arts as well. And I realized that that 
you know, I wanted to go into the performing arts, and uh, so I went to San Francisco to the San Francisco Circus Center, and I did uh, the clown program there, and it was a year-long intensive program, so I was there, um, you know, like a good full school year, and that's where I w- met my uh, performance partner, David, and we put together our first show and took it on the road and kind of never looked back, so... Yeah, so our background is definitely a little bit more in the theater, uh, like sort of bridging the gap between the theater and like the circus arts. Um, so definitely filling that that clown comedy role there. Um, we try not to say clown because I think some people get the wrong idea and they think, oh, balloon animals and a red nose and that kind of thing. Um, and so it's definitely not that. Like in this show, um, we have, you know, we're dressed like sort of old Victorian grave robbers. Um, I have these big puffy mutton chops. Uh, it's a lot of fun, yeah, and we try to keep a little bit of slapstick and sort of energetic aliveness in the show as well. So during the French performance over the years, have you had slow down shows? Yeah, yeah, we've been really lucky. Um, we've had a number of uh, sold-out shows. We've won some awards. Um, in fact, the the way that we managed to go to um, New Zealand was that we won an award that was basically like a touring exchange award when we were at the San Diego Fringe um, that allowed us to travel over there with our expenses paid. So that was super amazing. And we just feel really lucky, you know, especially when... Um, you know, uh, one time we got artists pick, and that was a really special award because, uh, of course, we love to know what the audience thinks, what the reviewer thinks, but really we, we do this for our community, and we love all the other artists and seeing each other's shows and supporting each other. And so to get that from, you know, to get, to get that boost from our peers felt really good. That was in Edmonton, I think, 2016, I believe it was. Yeah. And have you had any notable feedback from audience members that saw your different plays you've done? Yeah, actually, it's funny. Um, we we always quote this because we got two separate reviews that had the same um, line in them that said "physical comedy at its best," and we were like, "Wow, what a compliment!" We got that from two different newspapers. So whenever we go to put that on a poster, we're like, "Should we? How do we accredit that? You know, do we put both the names under, or who knows?" Um, but yeah, we've gotten all kinds of fun feedback. My favorite piece of feedback I got is we did a show. A lot of our shows are kind of family friendly. They're not for kids, but they're not not for kids. Um, and one time we did a show where there was a lot of kids in the audience, and one of them said to me, wow, you look like a real person. <laughs> I don't know what that means exactly, but I kind of, I liked it. Uh, it made me feel like they expected us to be, like, from a book, you know? Because we, we kind of do the kind of comedy that you would see in a cartoon, you know, a really slapstick, sort of elastic comedy. So that was a nice comment to get from a little kid. And are you basically just an hour long? Um, so they're usually about an hour long. We have a habit of sort of stretching them, so we're usually going right up to that hour. Um, and we try to build our shows a little bit on the shorter side because um, I think when we very first started working together, we thought, oh, an hour's a long time. How will we make so much material? But it turns out we have too many ideas, so actually the hard part is cutting it back down to an hour. So this show is new for us, and we're kind of trying to figure out, okay, what parts can we cut out so that we have enough time actually do the whole show. But yeah, it's running about 55 minutes right now. And if people want to find more information, do you have a website they can go to or social media? Yeah, we, uh, we have a website. It's under construction, so some pages are there and some pages aren't. That's a little bit off .us. Um, but we, can, we are also on Facebook. Uh, we are on Instagram. We're technically on Twitter, but we don't really go on there that much. So um, on Instagram, you can find us at a underscore little bit off. Um, and then, of course, the Winnipeg Fringe website has all the information about our show, A Grave Mistake. Um, and our next show is tonight at 10.15 p.m. Well, so you do a late night show, too, then. Yeah. I mean, we just do whatever times the festival gives us, right? And so we do have a late one tonight. Uh, and we don't know what will happen because, like we've been saying, the audience chooses. So, so far, we've done the show a total of three times. And every time, the audience has chose the same ending. So we're curious to see when they choose the other ending or if they ever do. But if you come to the show, you could be a part of that. Yeah. And what's your comments about the Winnipeg Fringe versus other fringes you visited? Like, what do you like about our city? Oh, yeah. Oh, Winnipeg is, Winnipeg is excellent. I mean, even just where we are right now, the Artist Lounge is such a lifesaver for, for us artists. You know, we drove about 30 hours to be here um, from Portland, Oregon, and the gas prices were steep. We were sleeping all cramped up in the van with mosquitoes. And so to get here and to have the hospitality and everybody is so friendly and happy to see us. And it feels, you know, it feels like a second home almost. And coming into this space and where we can, you know, 
stretch out and do our computer work. And I'm over there making a uh, little merch to sell after the show. And so it's really nice community vibe. And I just, it's so nice to have so many people excited to see shows and supporting live theater. And uh, we're just so glad to be back. It's been too long. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for joining us and good luck in your shows. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so thank much. You.